To make tab groups even better, you can now... All right, so Macs and MacBooks have been knocking it out of the park since Apple introduced their own Apple Silicon. But you know, a machine is only as good as the person using it. And with macOS, there are definitely a lot of features, including some newly introduced ones, like new spotlight features, stage manager, and collaborative tools that you should definitely know about if you want to get the most out of your MacBook and boost your productivity. Here's how I optimize macOS, part two. If you find any of these tips useful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. It would really help me out. Okay, let's talk about Spotlight Quick Look and Quick Actions. For anyone using macOS, Spotlight is an essential tool that drastically cuts down the time for everyday tasks, from locating a file or folder to doing a web search, and the latest macOS Ventura has added a few new tricks. First, Spotlight Quick Look. Just like a finder window, you can now quickly preview folders, files, and even web pages from Spotlight. I found this particularly useful in instances where I just needed to quickly grab some information from a document, or when I had different project files with similar names. And this just gave me a quick way to find the right file before opening it. To use Quick Look, activate Spotlight with Command and Spacebar, and type in the name of the file you're looking for. Navigate to your file with the arrow keys and hit Spacebar to activate a quick preview of the selected file. If you want to quickly extract some text, you can also copy the text from the preview window. If you want to open the file from the preview window, hit the return key. Or you can open the folder containing the file by leaving the Quick Look and hitting Command R. For web search results, Quick Look delivers a preview of the web page. You can open the web page by pressing the return key. Or open any of the links from the preview window by holding Command and clicking the link. All right. So Apple has given Spotlight even more functionality through Spotlight Quick Actions. With Quick Actions, you can easily access certain apps right in the Spotlight menu. For example, you can start a timer, create an alarm, ask Shazam to tell you the song that's currently playing, or turn on focus modes. Now, these are really useful for performing these quick tasks, but it is a little finicky at this early stage because Spotlight isn't quite good enough to recognize natural language. This means you'll have to use specific phrases to activate the quick actions. For the quick actions I listed before, here are the specific phrases you'll need to activate them. You can also activate any shortcut you've created in the Shortcuts app by typing the name of the shortcut. All right, so Spotlight gives you a quick way to access your files and folders, but with so many files on the go, a desktop can easily get cluttered. So here's where Stage Manager comes in. Stage Manager is a new way to organize apps and windows that was introduced in macOS Ventura, and it's a great way to declutter your workspace to help you stay focused. I like to think of it as a second layer to virtual desktops. If you swipe up with four fingers, you can see your multiple desktops. I use the virtual desktops to distinguish between different projects, and then I use Stage Manager to group windows relating to tasks within a project. So how does Stage Manager work? First, you have to enable Stage Manager through the control center. By default, Stage Manager will group windows of the same app together in the thumbnail area along the left side of your screen, with the active group in the center of the screen. But you can also combine windows from different apps together to suit your needs. You can add windows from other apps in the thumbnail area by simply dragging them to the center of the screen or by holding Shift and clicking on them. If you want a better view of the windows in the thumbnail area, click on the groups icon. To send windows back to the side, you can either drag the window to the side Minimize the window by pressing the yellow minimize button at the top of the window or by pressing command and M. Converting image file types. So one of the greatest things about iPhones is that they take amazing photos and they use the HEIC format to keep the file sizes of those photos small. But unfortunately, not all devices support HEIC files. And sometimes I end up sending a photo to someone only to have them reply and tell me they can't access the file. Well, you can change the settings on your iPhone to capture photos in the more commonly used JPEG format. But for those who want to take advantage of the smaller file sizes of HEIC, but also occasionally need the use of JPEG, you can convert the file right on your MacBook. To do this, right click on an image, select Quick Actions and then Convert Image. Here you have the option to convert your image into a variety of different file types. You also have the option of choosing the file size of the end product and whether you'd like to keep the file's metadata. Keep in mind, if you do choose a smaller file size, it will reduce the quality of the image. Customizing the start page of Safari tab groups. Anyone who has seen my other macOS video knows I'm a big fan of Safari tab groups. 
It's a great way to organize tab groups relating to different projects, and it syncs between all your Apple devices if you're logged into the same Apple ID. Well, you can differentiate tab groups even further by customizing the start page for each tab group. Maybe you've got a tab group dedicated to a certain project. In that case, you might want to have bookmarks related to that project at your fingertips. And if you have a tab group dedicated to relaxing, well, then maybe you want to have all your streaming services appear first. All right, so to customize the start page, make sure you've got a tab group selected. Open a new start page, click the settings button in the bottom right hand corner, check the box next to tab group favorites, and there will now be a new space to place bookmarks that will only appear for this tab group. To begin adding bookmarks, just open the bookmarks in the sidebar and drag them in. If you want to customize your tab groups even further, you can also set a custom wallpaper for each tab group. To make tab groups even better, you can now share Safari tab groups. So tab groups really are a great way to collect and organize related tabs. And now it's also a great tool for collaboration. You can share your tab groups with others, allowing them to view and add tabs to your tab group. This is especially useful if you're all working on the same project, planning a trip, or even compiling a shopping list. To do this, everyone you're collaborating with must be signed into their Apple ID, have Safari turned on in their iCloud settings, and have two-factor authentication turned on. From here, open your sidebar by clicking on the sidebar icon in Safari. Click on the three dots next to your tab group and select Share Tab Group. Click Messages and message the person or group you'd like to share the tab group with. Okay, are you ever in a situation where you're scrolling through the web and you stumble across something you need to keep for later? Well, a very easy way to do that is by using Quick Notes. Quick Notes are a fast way to create notes on the fly and they can be accessed in the Quick Notes folder in the Notes app. Now, there are a couple ways to activate Quick Notes. The first of which is via the keyboard by pressing FN and Q. A Quick Note will appear for you to jot down your thoughts. The second way to activate a quick note is by using hot corners. Hover your cursor over the bottom right corner of the screen and a quick note will peep out. Click on it to open a quick note. You can also change which corner you'd like to activate a quick note by accessing the desktop and dock section of the system settings and select the hot corners setting in the bottom right. The third and probably most interesting way to use quick notes is through Safari. In Safari, you can clip text from the browser to add to your quick notes. To do this, highlight some text you'd like to clip, right click on it and select add to quick note. By default, starting a quick note will add to your existing quick note. If you prefer to create a new quick note each time, you can do that in the settings of the notes app. With the notes app open, click notes in the menu bar and select settings. From here, uncheck always resume to last quick note. If you're on a web page that you've already clipped some text from, the clipped text will appear highlighted and a bit of your quick note will appear in the corner of your screen. You can also add links to quick notes. And this applies to apps outside of Safari. Quick notes can remember your recently used apps and let you link to them. Just sent off a message and need to remember something? Quick notes is perfect for that. Just open a quick note and click the add a link button. Once added, clicking on the link will open the relevant app. Right click to translate. Are you ever on your computer and stumble across some text in a foreign language or want to translate some text of your own? Well, now there's no need to open a separate app to translate text anymore because macOS has a function built into the OS. Simply highlight the text in question, right click on it and select translate. From here, you can copy the translation or even have macOS read it out loud to you. Speaking of text, did you know you can actually interact with text in pictures and videos with live text selection? When you open an image, macOS is able to recognize text in the image, allowing you to directly interact with it. This means you can access useful functions like lookup, translate, or even a simple copy and paste. macOS is even smart enough to recognize dates and times to easily set new events or reminders. macOS can also recognize text from video. Just pause a video and you'll be able to access all the nifty features I mentioned before. Live text with video currently works with photos, quick look, and safari. Isolating a subject from an image. So one of the coolest features that Apple introduced in iOS 16 was the ability to isolate a subject from a picture. And they brought that same feature to macOS. Just right click on an image and select copy subject. From here, you can paste the isolated subject from your clipboard. It's that easy. So far, this feature works in photos, screenshots, quick look, and safari. All right, let's talk about window management. 
So macOS gives you two ways to quickly resize your windows. But to have complete control over your windows, including the use of customizable keyboard shortcuts, I do recommend a third party app. But first, let's go over the built in methods. If you hover your cursor over the green button at the top left of your window, you can enter full screen mode or tile the window to the left or the right of the screen. Tiling the window shifts the window into a semi full screen mode, where it'll fill up half of the screen and ask you to select another window to fill up the other side. But I tend to find this full screen mode a little annoying to use. So to manage your windows without having to enter any sort of full screen mode, hold option while hovering your cursor over the same green button. The options have now changed, allowing you to zoom or move your window to the left or the right of the screen. To be honest, I find these methods a bit finicky. As an easier window management tool, I recommend using an app called Rectangle. It's free to use and has a great level of functionality and customizability to suit your needs. It introduces the ability to snap your windows by dragging your windows to the edge of the screen with customizable zones and customizable keyboard shortcuts if you want to speed up your window management even further. For me, I like to keep one hand on the trackpad and one hand on the keyboard, so I recommend mapping the shortcuts like this. This means I can control most of my window management needs with just one hand. Alright, those are some of the things that I do to boost productivity in macOS. If you found any of these tips helpful, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. If there are any tricks that you use that I've missed, let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys do. Alright, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>